Giovanni Battista Gaoli is going to be a very interesting artist. He's going to continue to play with these ideas of perspective, especially when it comes to ceiling paintings. Now, according to Kleiner's textbook, the church had discovered the power of ceiling murals during the Baroque, and as much as I'd like to believe that, it's kind of problematic. Now, they do, the church ceilings, do create a transient spiritual environment, this almost transcendental environment where you are awed by the creation of God. But, well, there's this little issue, which is they knew about the ceiling, the power of ceiling murals. After all, the papacy has the Sistine Chapel ceiling to, well, literally look up to. But in this case, we're looking at the triumph of the name of Jesus. And this is done over the nave in Il Gesù, the mother church of the Jesuit order. So here, the mural opens the ceiling to the spiritual expanses of heaven, a window into the Catholic afterlife, and a strong statement to the congregation of Il Gesù, this, again, mother church of the Jesuit order. Now, while the worthy will find heaven, sinners seem to hang on for dear life, almost grabbing on to the edges of the mural itself, as if it's a cliff, and they're tumbling out of the ceiling into the viewer's space. Further, the surrounding decorative plaster, which is real, all that gold plaster work is real. It's three-dimensional. That plaster work is going to be shadowed, along with the figures, to give the sense of intense light passing through the hole and a sense of realism. So it's one thing to have these figures hanging in space, but now he's put a shadow on the very real, very three-dimensional plaster work that's already in place. It creates an incredible illusion for the congregation below. He's creating a miracle before their very eyes, something that we constantly see the church trying to do, either through the arts or through architecture. So to further the illusion, many of the sinners are sculpted in low relief on the ceiling. So many of these figures, and it's very difficult to get a picture of, will actually have very shallow uh, relief to them. So the plaster is laid to make a slightly three-dimensional hand, for example. It's very subtle, but it lends an air of realism to the entire piece. And what we're seeing is this very theatrical manipulation of light, the light coming from the opening, from the heavens, rather than from anywhere else. And by using that same consistent light over a three-dimensional space, the ceiling of the church, he creates something surprisingly realistic. So when we look at the overall form of the painting, what you see are the sinners pouring out into the viewer's space, almost as if they're going to start showering down on the congregation while at the same time giving us a glimpse of the heavens depicted in very abstract terms, really as a bright piece of light and some angelic figures, maybe some saints. And then when it gets real, these are figures who are either undergoing judgment or tumbling out of the space. It makes you wonder, well, in the 17th century, whether you would actually get into heaven. It gives you that air of doubt that might have you return to the church and try and repent for your sins so that you can find yourself on your way to heaven in the afterlife. 